You know, for the last couple days, all I've seen is insanity on YouTube, on Twitter. Now, a lot of it to do with Trump, which I expected. People are going to be nuts about that for quite a while. And that is sad, because they desperately want him to fail. Whereas, I'd rather he succeed, and I hate Trump. But the best I can do right now is hope that he doesn't completely fuck us over and prepare myself for the chance that he might. And I would have been thinking the same thing with Hillary, because, believe it or not, I do not want the person in charge of the country to fuck up. But what really twisted my nipples was how people are going crazy over John Tron. And, like almost anything, it's because his opinions, his views, don't mesh with others. So it caused an uproar in the SJW community. And amidst all that, somewhere in there, it just got me thinking. And I came to the conclusion that SJWs are pussies. Big, fat, flapping in the wind pussies. Because I think I've caught on as to why there are so many SJWs in America, the UK, Australia... And that's because it is so easy to bitch and moan about stupid shit like wage gaps that don't even exist, oppression that doesn't exist, and all kinds of other bullshit. Because they are in their safe space. They are within their country or a country that allows them to whine like fucking bitches. But you will never see one of these assholes take the fight to where it's actually needed. I actually challenge any SJW to go over to the Middle East and try and pull off one of your rallies there. And I want to see you pull it off within a city. Not outside the city, around a bunch of tents. No, I want to see it inside a fucking city. But we both know Well, we all know that's never going to happen. Because your bravado goes only so far. Because, let's face it, you would rather sacrifice your own mothers than have to go to these countries and do what you do. Because you know full well, at the very fucking least, you might be jailed. And that's if you're picked up by the right people. We all know the chances are much higher that you will face a whipping, a stoning, or a fucking beheading. Or, for a pastime over there, throwing someone off a roof. Like, I just have to ask, does it not get tiring going on about all this oppression when there is no such thing within your communities, within your countries? Don't you feel the least bit ashamed of yourselves prattling on about bullshit Where somewhere else, someone is truly suffering. Someone is truly oppressed. Where there is a rape culture. Where women truly are considered lesser beings than men. I mean, fuck, I'll tell you what, I'll go easier on you. I challenge you to go to Russia. You may not get killed there for your rallies and your bullshit, but most likely you'll still get yourself a hell of a whooping. I mean, God, it just, it gets so frustrating fighting for people's rights when they already have rights. And, yeah, I'm sorry, but I am talking about Islam. The Islamic religion that says this shit is okay. Oh, but I'm just a big Islamophobe. Yeah, I am. You should fucking be too. Look, not all Muslims are terrorists. But many terrorists are. Because they took the ideology way too fucking far. And it's those fuckers that I am afraid of. And if there is anyone else who should be more afraid than me, it is SJWs, at least the feminists and the gay community, the transsexual community. Because given the chance, you'd be killed for doing this shit. Like, I've seen SJW saying that Sharia law should be a thing over here. Now, granted, there is no fucking way that we would let people kill someone over their sex or ideology. 
But that still means that women got to cover themselves. They are not as important as men. Within their community, if someone rapes them, 90% of the time, their rapist will go free. And he will go free because he is a man. So why, oh why, would you jump down someone's throat for being Islamophobic when you are the ones who truly have something to fear? I mean, Christ, there have been several incidences of honor killings over here long before the whole radical Islam thing even became a thing. Long before 9-11, this shit was happening. Because the fathers felt they were doing the right thing. Either because their daughters had sex out of wedlock or some shit, or were just dating the wrong person, or not following their orders. I mean, let's not forget, in mid-late 90s, a man sliced his daughter's throat. And when she didn't die, he put her in the trunk of his car and pushed her into a river. And the entire time, the father did not show any signs of remorse. If you don't think we should be afraid of that kind of thinking, you are the most ignorant people on this planet. And look, it is not an easy time with terrorism and the refugees and all this stuff. And hey, I would love to be able to help these refugees. They've seen some shit that people should never have to see in their lives. But we do have to be careful. There is nothing wrong with a stricter vetting process. And even then, it's still going to probably have loopholes, flaws. There are still going to be possible dangers coming in. But we have to try. But I guess let's ignore that. Instead, we'll call people who don't share our views Nazis. Well, sorry, your views. Which, believe it or not, I share some. The fundamentals are true. People should be treated equally, regardless of race, sex, religion, yada, yada, yada. But, they already are. The only places you will find true bigotry is either on an individual level, or at best, pockets of idiocy. Like those towns that have segregated proms. It's places like that you'll find real bigotry. Where it's pretty much the norm for them, and that is sad. But, they're assholes. What do you expect? It's not a male thing, it's not a white thing, it's an asshole thing. Look, if I held an entire race or any culture responsible for the actions of a few, I'd be an asshole. And don't give me shit. Well, you were just saying about Islamophobia and shit. Well, hold the fuck on. I doubt some backwater hick is going to strap a shitload of bombs to his chest, run into a black prom, and blow himself up. Though, granted, the chance is they are just very slim. Like, point not one percent or some shit. But, you know, I, I rambled long enough. This is getting close to ten minutes, if not a little bit over already. But... Before I do go, I have to ask a, a question. And a question to someone in particular. I have to ask a question to Christy Winters, who some time ago was part of that big uh, questions for anti-SJWs, which I even made a, a small response video to that, but I've been seeing a lot of her one question, why not go after robust feminist arguments? And that got me thinking as well as to what are the robust feminist arguments? What are the robust any arguments within the SJW community? Like, I just want a list of five things, you know what I mean? Like, top five, top five. Number one being the highest, number five being the lowest. That's all I want. Just five of the strongest feminist SJW arguments. And I don't want to know them just to try and disprove them or say that's stupid. I want to know them because I don't know what they are. I mean, is the wage gap actually one of the big arguments still? You know, I'm seriously curious. And that's where I'm going to stop it now. I've rambled on long enough. I'll give you people a break from my fairly monotone voice. I thank you all for your time and have a good day.